Rumpelstiltskin. What is that fairy tale about? Dora does not do a good job of hiding her laughter. She snores and crosses my arms, embarrassed. Mother burned the fairy tales in the palace before I got a chance to read all of them. Like, I don't get it. Like, if Delora knows that her mom, like, burned all the stories, like, why is she making fun of her? Like, all I'm seeing is people just picking on her. Because they don't fit her, like, happy-go-lucky princess that they want her to be. Like, they have to understand that she's unhappy for a reason. It's not just because, oh, she's so cold. But the way that she was raised, I don't blame her for being cold. Nothing in this world has showed her that it, the world is nice. And all of a sudden, someone wants to be nice to her? I don't think so. Like, I don't blame her for, like, not giving a shit. And, like, Dolora was the one person she trusted, and she's making fun of her for not knowing the Rumpelstiltskin curse or its story. And knowing that her mom carried, like, you know, burned all the stories, like, that's bullshit. Fine, fine. I'll keep it short. Once upon a time, there was a girl that was said to be able to spin straw into gold. The king found her and locked her up in a tower. He said he wouldn't let her out until she turned out turn all of the straw into the room into gold but the girl was just a regular human girl she knew she knew she would never be able to turn the straw into gold and feared that she would would be locked up forever that's when an old, odd little man appeared before her and offered to do the job for her if she gave him something in return the girl gave her her necklace and the man spent the rest of the night spinning the straw into gold However, the girl wasn't released. The second night, she was given more straw to spin, and the little man appeared once more. This time, she gave him her ring. On the third night, the king ordered her to spin the straw one last time, and if she did, she would be released and made his queen. However, that night, the girl had nothing left to give the little man, so they made an agreement. He would spin the straw into gold for her, as long as she gave him her first child. I personally never understood why the girl would want to marry the king in the first place. Hush, I'm telling the story here. <sighs> Years passed and the queen finally gave birth to her first child. That night, the odd little man returned and demanded his due, but the queen didn't want to give up her child. The man then said that he wouldn't take the child if the queen was able to guess his name in three days. His name, the man's name was Rumpelstiltskin. Did she guess it? Oh yeah, the night before her time was officially up, the queen was drawn to the forest by the sound of a little voice. She saw the little man celebrating his upcoming victory, singing about how nobody had ever or would ever guess his real name, which was Rumpelstiltskin. He does not sound particularly smart. Particularly smart. So that agrees the general populace. Sometimes I wonder how Hans was able to come up with such t tall tales. Well, the marching is open soon. I expect another busy day. Especially busy for you, Melly's booty. You need to start coming up with your good deeds. <sighs> the, amne the amnesiac Cansanova was allowed to stay at the marching with the other boarders. Because he still seemed capable, Parfait sent him to work as one of the marching servers. Annie's protest that he remains in bed fell on deaf ears. Parfait could very well throw him out, not not while knowing that he had nowhere to go. I will be incapable of showing him such kindness given all the nonsense he spots at us. The people that frequent the marching begin to steadily ignore me altogether, like I do not exist. It is better that these stares and the hateful looks. Rumpel, you aren't here to flirt. But this lovely lady is unattended. Sir Rumpel, please, you're making me blush. Because this man couldn't res remember his name, he fashioned one from his own curse. Oh, I remember what's coming up. Oh, no, I remember what's coming up. I think it suits him. I will never understand Parfait. This amorous amass waste of space is about as useful as karma. I've returned. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Do you miss me? Did you miss me? 
Karma had abruptly yes had left abruptly yesterday, saying that she had some very important to take care of. Watts trails in after her now, carrying several boxes in his arms. Why am I carrying these? Because you made me run the errand for you at the toy shop the other day. And because gentlemen carry things for ladies. I'm going to drop them now. Those boxes contain very important contents, boy. Welcome home, Miss Karma. Nice to see you survive the trip, Watts. Thank you, Anise. So this is our new housemate. We have not had the opportunity to meet. I am... <gasps> we were all surprised when Rumpel suddenly reached out to grab Karma's hand. My life before this moment has been a depressing monochrome. Now that you have entered my bleak existence, I see everything in beautiful blaze blazing color yes and nothing shines more brightly more vividly than you huh i am rumple very sweet let us talk of marriage i stare back at karma waiting for her to flirt back <sighs> karma doesn't look amused at all at the very least, expect her to wave Rumpel away for being a fool. But she remains eerily silent. Answer my angel, I beg of you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Keep. Say the word, and it's done. Your filthy hands off of me. Ooh, I heard that. Mm. Oh. Not again. I would never be interested in the likes of you. Go on, lad. Give him a good beating, like the one you gave me. Oh! I don't know, it's some random guy in the back, I guess. My queen, there's no need for violence. What did you call me? Please calm down. Rumpel is still recovering. What's going on? Karma is a man. Doesn't take kindly to being flirted with. Or proposed to. Uh, she? Is a man? But your voice, your face, your breasts. <laughs> God damn it, Rumble, shut the fuck up. That's what you're focus focusing on, pervert. I worship all aspects of the female form, but my particular favorite has always been. Oh. Do yourself a favor and shut up. I would I never would have known, but why would he do this? Don't look at me like that. I have my reasons. Is it because of your curse? Yes. I I am undone. My heart is in pieces. You knew him for ten minutes. For those that can can hear the music of their heart, like I, it only only takes a look to fall madly, irretrievably in love. I must leave. My heart will need time to heal. Okay. Uh. The marching attracts all sorts, doesn't it? The one is entirely per face fault. All right, on. Um, all right, nothing to see here. Back to work. Ah, God damn it, Rumple. I am so in shock from what I learned today earlier. Karma, a man. It's not fair that he is so beautiful as a woman. And the female population of Angel knew the truth. Karma would be hunted down for the making the rest of us pale in comparison. And he's being good, I suppose, prepared a special lunch to welcome the new march and boarders. We've all been invited to the private dining room. 
Excuse me, is Lady Parfait here? Prince Rod, perfect timing. Please join us for lunch. I can only talk came to talk to you, Lady Parfait. But I'm hungry, and I have no wish to make you wait while I eat. Come join us. Please, Your Highness. I've made too much, as usual. You must help us finish. <sighs> Very well. A cursed princess and a cursed prince. What an eccentric collection of friends you have, Miss Lady Parfait. I wouldn't say they were eccentric, necessarily. You're the most eccentric one here, Rumple. Really now? <laughs> I sit silently in my chair. I am uncomfortable around so many people. Even when my mother was alive, I had all my meals alone, since my parents were always too busy to sit down for meals with me. The meals with Ophelia and her children were always so were also all, always awkward and silent. Somehow the atmosphere here is lively and friendly. Even I barely know anyone here. <sighs> is something wrong? Excuse me? You've barely touched your food. Don't you like it? Dolores said this was one of your favorites. I'm just not used to eating with company, that's that's all. They say that sharing a meal brings the family closer together. Garland. I apologize. Closer together, huh? So have you made any progress on how to do to do those good deeds, princess? There is no way I, I am admitting that I do not even know how to complete one. Oh, I forgot you're not so good on doing good front. You're not very helpful. Why don't you ask someone to teach you how to do good? What? Well, that's not something you hear every day. As in, take some kind of lessons? If you're having so much trouble on your own, you should ask someone to give you some advice or teach you. It's as simple as that. What is this I hear? The princess needs advice. Well then, she's in luck. I happen to give the most excellent advice, and believe me when I say I can teach almost anything. Um. The princess is indeed lucky as I am, I am available for teaching duties. No doubt, I'll be the better choice as I don't go about deceiving the world. Oh shit, now they're hating each other. Excuse me? Um, once I have flirting to bitter enemies, all in the span of a few hours. The man broke my heart. <sighs> anyway, I'd be happy to help you in any way I can, princess. And I'm sure your stepbrother will be happy to help as well. He's not gonna help. I don't think I would make the best teacher for this sort of thing. I only teach others how to fight. Never mind the fact that Juin herself still struggles to be struggles to be good. What? You're lucky, aren't you? So many people are willing to help you. Why? Huh? Why are you all willing to help me? That's what we do at the march and we help each other. Lesson number one. Doing good means helping when everyone can. Just let us, any of us know if you want our help. Trust no one but be yourself. You need not care for anyone but yourself. That is what mother and, and the last few years have taught me. I've always been alone and it's easier that way. And yet, these strangers, these people that I've only known for a few days are so willing to help me when they will gain nothing in return. Is this the goodness I was meant to see? Father? How can I even begin to trust and care for others when I have forgotten how to do so? I slowly begin to understand what I must do. 